I don't remember much of how to do anything that I learned from my trigonometry classes back in mathematics at school. To be honest, I even had to look up the word trigonometry to be reminded of what it meant just for this illustration. You see, finding out what missing angles are or what the missing length of a triangle is are not skills that I use that often in my working life. It's just something that I learned way back in the day at a specific time to pass an exam, but have since left it all behind in my life. Now, that's not to be disrespectful of trigonometry or of mathematics in general. There are so many people out there for whom trigonometry has meaning and value every day, and I am sure that I benefit from their skills. All I'm saying is that I don't remember much from my lessons except for just one thing. So katoa. You remember that? Yeah, I can remember that little mnemonic and, and I can remember what all of the letters stand for in it. I just really can't remember how to identify that that's what I need to use anymore. That's it. There are other tools that were given to me in the years of my education. Tools that were given to help me remember things that I continue to use to this very day. Every time I find myself counting weeks ahead into the coming months, I will be counting Sundays in particular, counting them in sevens through any given month. And when I get close to the number 30, I have to stop what I'm doing and whisper to myself, 30 days, has September, April, June, and November. You know it. Seriously, every single time I find myself coming back to remember just how many days there are in any given month, and I come back to that poem. And I'm fairly confident that many of you do exactly the same. How can it be that a simple poem taught to us all early in our education is something that we continue to use to this day, decades on? Another one that I use quite often is one that was given to me in my childhood to help me remember the colours of the rainbow. Richard of York gave battle in vain. The first letters of every word in that sentence help me to remember that the colours of the rainbow are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. In fairness, it's not one that I use every single day, but I can call it to mind when I need to. This is the power of simple tools to help remind us of both important and some unimportant little tidbits of information. In the Christian tradition, we also employ a similar understanding when we invite people to memorize scripture. I have a vivid memory of learning the 23rd Psalm when I must only have been about seven or eight years old. The way we learned it was by memorizing it. Our Sunday school teacher sent us home each week to commit these words to memory. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake, and so on. Just a couple of months ago in a sermon, I was telling you how a line of scripture from Lamentations chapter 3 was healing for me around the time of my mother's passing. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Perhaps you have some verses that you have committed to memory that lie deep in your bones. Verses that help you in moments of challenge, moments of difficulty. Verses that remind you in those times that you are not alone, that you are a beloved child of God, that you have all that you need to keep on going. Now, if you understand the value and the power of committing things to memory and recalling them when they are needed, well then, you're going to understand what's going on with Psalm 111. Because that's exactly what this poem was written for. To be remembered and to be a reminder of who God is. 
Psalm 111 has 22 lines, and each one of them begins with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is made up of 22 letters. You see, even ancient writers were using simple tools to help people remember important things. And they had to remember them, because they lived in a time when they did not have printed books that they could turn up Psalm 111 in. They couldn't Google it on the internet These people just couldn't turn up Psalm 111. They had to know it. And if a person did have this psalm committed to memory, then they would also have a really good brief primer on the very nature and character of God. Now I want to suggest to you today, church, that knowing Psalm 111 still offers us a good short brief primer on the very nature and character of the God that we worship. And worship is where this psalm starts. The opening line is a simple doxology of praise. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, in the original language. In saying these words, the individual or the gathered congregation are immediately reminded that the God who is at the very center of this poem, the very center of their liturgy, is indeed worthy to be praised. Then having made that simple statement, the psalmist continues by saying that they're going to give thanks to the Lord with their whole heart. In these opening sentences, the psalmist brings praises before God and offers thanks for all that God has done. And they also declare that the works of the Lord are great. So not only is the psalmist stating that God is worthy of praise, But they are also encouraging the members of the congregation to be specific about their reasons for bringing praise to God. So often in our lives at church, it's easy to attend online or to gather in a space like this and just go through the motions of the things that we do so regularly. We know when to stand up and when to sit down. We know how to sing along with the songs and hymns that are sung. We know when to bow our heads and pray. We listen listen well during that sermon moment. I mean, at least I hope you're listening well during this sermon moment. In all of it, we are bringing our worship and our adoration and our praise before God. But do we ever really stop and specifically bring before God the reasons that God is worthy to be praised? I mean, do we? Maybe we need to stop just here and now and consider for a moment the great works of God in our lives in recent days. I mean, seriously, friends, as you look around at the landscape of your own life story in recent days, what can you point to that makes you say, great are the works of the Lord? Those things don't have to be huge or dramatic it might be something as simple as stepping out your front door or onto your porch and feeling the breeze against your face whatever that thing might be for you psalm 111 reminds its readers you and me that the works of the lord in the world are great and that god is worthy to be praised and thanked with our whole hearts And how important it is that we remember that in these days that we're living in. We are in a season of time in which we are witnesses to unimaginable things in our world. Devastation and suffering happening before our eyes in real time. Active shooters on school and college campuses. A widening poverty gap and an increasing number of people who just can't afford to feed themselves or their families. Mental health struggles that are pushing people deeper into desperation and hopelessness. As we look around and see all of that and more, it is so easy to develop our own sense of hopelessness and despair. I'm serious. I I hear it from people so often. We see these things and we begin to wonder if our God is with us at all. Our doubts around faith can come to the fore. Friends, these are profoundly difficult times we are living in in this world. And that's why remembering the greatness of God's works in our lives and in this world is so vital. But the psalmist doesn't stop there. 
Over the next couple of verses, he goes on to tell us that God's work is full of honor and majesty, that God's righteousness endures forever, that God is gracious and merciful, that God is ever mindful of God's covenant, and that God's works are also faithful and just. They are established forever. These are statements about the very character and nature of God. So not only is the reader of this psalm encouraged to reflect on the greatness of God's deeds in their lives, but they are also recalling the why behind those deeds. God's deeds are great because God is honorable, majestic, righteous, gracious, merciful, faithful, just, and eternal. When you consider that this psalm is only 22 lines long, and it's only made up of 70 words in the original Hebrew language, you've got to say that's an impressive collection of theological statements about God contained in so few words. A person who memorized and internalized this short poem would be carrying around a solid theology in their heart or mind. And that was the whole point. It's also the point of all of the other things that we memorize and recite in the church. Think about the Apostles' Creed or the Lord's Prayer or some of the best-known hymns. All of these are condensed versions of a larger biblical and theological truth. They are designed to be internalized so that we can put up these guardrails in our hearts and minds that help to keep us on track. They also provide comfort in moments of uncertainty and fear as we recall these truths about God's love and faithfulness. The psalmist knew of the importance of being able to call to mind the character and nature of the God whose works in the world are so great. Doing so would create an anchor point in times of doubt and questioning and struggle. The psalmist knew this. And that's how we end up with Psalm 111. The same is still very true today, friends. For you and me, the need to be able to recall some of the basic truths that we hold about the triune God and about the good news of God's great love, gosh, it remains important in the life of faith. In the moments when you feel alone or isolated, it's important to be able to call to mind the promise of God to never leave you nor forsake you. In those moments when you feel like you might be beyond the love of God, it's important to remember that nothing will ever separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Or when life feels like it's just too much, it's important to remember that Christ has invited all of those who are weary and burdened to come to him and take on his yoke because it is easy and his burden is light. When we feel trapped in a situation, when we feel powerless, when we can't imagine a way forward, it is important to remember that our lives are sustained not by our own efforts and ideas and imagination alone, but instead we are sustained by the power of God's Spirit. And in the power of God's Spirit, there is always hope and a way forward. Can you see how important it is to remember those things? I mean, that's a huge part of the reason that we've been journeying together through these 28 days of dynamite prayer. Each day we've been opening up our hearts and minds to the power and to the work of God's Spirit. We've been given at the end of each devotion what they call in the book a, a prayer hold. That's just a short two or three word prayer that we are invited to take into our days. It is a short two or three word prayer which will remind us of a truth about who God is and about what the work of God's Spirit is. Friends, Psalm 111 was an ancient psalm written to help the people of Israel remember that God had rescued them, that God was with them in that moment, and that God would be with them forevermore. To remember God's grace and compassion and mercy for them. To remember the greatness of God's deeds. 
and to remember that there was no reason that God wouldn't continue to perform those deeds in their lives. It was so important for them to hold on to that and to remember the greatness of God. And friends, I say to you today, in the world in which we live, with everything that goes on all around us, with all of the plates that are spinning in your own life too, the distractions are real. It is so easy to take our eyes off of God and to forget these truths that we sing and celebrate each week in worship. So I offer to you Psalm 111 again. I offer to you again this process of dynamite prayer through which we are engaging in the work of remembering the greatness of God. So that in our hardest times, so that in our loneliest times, the times of greatest struggle, we will always be able to call to mind the greatness of God's works in our lives and we will always return thanks with all of our hearts to the one who created us and who calls us forth into this world. May it be so in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, at the end of every one of our digital sermons, we always have a couple of questions to help you reflect on the things that you learned in the last few moments. So here are some questions for this week. And that brings us to the close of our digital worship service. As always, we're just so glad that you chose to join us here for these moments together. We hope that you were blessed by what you engaged in, what you heard, and that you knew God's presence with you, and that you will know God's presence with you as you leave this place. We do want to invite you to join us again. Our digital service goes out next Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on our YouTube channel. We hope that you'll join us there. Or if you can't join us there, you want to join us in person here in Fernandina Beach on our campus. We would love to welcome you to this space. We have three worship services every Sunday morning. Our first is at 8 a.m. here in the sanctuary. Then we worship at 9.30 in Maxwell Hall. And we are back here at 11 a.m. in our sanctuary again for our traditional worship service. We would love to see you at any one of those services. And we would love to welcome you into this space. Friends, it is good to gather together. And between now and next week, I hope that you will receive this benediction. Beloved children of God, go in peace. As those who are called to remember the greatness of God. As those who are called to be encouraged by the greatness of God. Go with thanksgiving into your life this week. Thanking God with all of your heart. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit.